Hi guys. So today I have this Sony cassette deck. The model number is TCK611S. And this one does have a problem. I'll power it up and you'll be able to hear it. Quite noisy. I hope you can hear that. And the capstan roller is not spinning. So on this deck, when we switch it on, the motor is supposed to drive the capstan roller. That's meant to be spinning all of the time. And the motor's spinning, obviously, because we can hear it, but the capstan isn't. So this will need some belts. I have ordered the belts already. Here they are. There's a flat one and a small square belt. I'm not sure what the small one is for. I haven't opened this up yet, but uh, we will find that out. So now let me just switch that off. So just before we open it up, we'll take a little look around the front. This one, uh, if you haven't noticed already, is a Dolby S deck. Now the model number has an S in it, which references that. And also a badge here, Dolby BCS noise reduction, HX Pro. There is a switch to switch on Dolby S. There's a sticker here saying Dolby S. And there is a legend on the transport here saying Dolby S. So I think they wanted you to, uh, I, think they, I think they wanted you to know it was Dolby S deck when you saw this in the shop. This is a nicely laid out deck, center transport, touch sensitive controls, uh, nice vacuum fluorescent display. We've got headphones with a level, so there's a, um, a built-in amplifier there for the headphones. Um, it's a three-head cassette deck, which means you can monitor what you're recording without having to rewind it and play it back. So there's a switch here called monitor, and when you record something, it can record and play back at the same time. So the monitor will switch between the source audio and what's been recorded on the tape. So it's really good. You can switch between the two just by pressing this switch, um, adjust your recording level and your balance and everything else. And hopefully you get that recording as close to the source audio that you can. Now, this is the first cassette deck video I think I've done that's had a manual bias adjustment. So what bias is when you buy your tapes, your ferric type one, chrome type two, metal type 4 they all have what's known as different bias levels on those tapes and the cassette deck if it can detect those different tapes will set up that bias uh, accordingly and it will set it to a, a standard um, setting for that tape now the problem you have with that is that different tapes especially from different manufacturers you get two chrome tapes they will have slightly different bias um, levels on that tape It'll have different characteristics and you'll need to set that bias slightly differently, which is why you have an, either an automatic control or you have a manual control like this one. I prefer the automatic control because when you do it manually, you're trying to get those levels the same. Basically, what a bias does is if you turn it one way, I can't remember which way now, but you turn it one way, you get a increased bass response, lower frequencies, and a lower output from the higher frequencies, you turn it the other way and you get the opposite. So the point of the bias control is to get those levels the same. Um, so you get this neutral response and it can do that automatically because it knows what the response is and it, it can adjust it itself. But uh, this one is a, is a manual one. The way this works with a three head deck, you press calibration, it will start recording on the tape and it'll put um, a bass tone and a high tone. So the bass tone I think is 400 hertz and the higher frequency tone is 10 kilohertz. And it'll record that on the tape. What you then do is look at the display because the display changes and shows you the high and low frequencies that you adjust the bias control and the record level to get them both lined up and both at the zero dB mark. We'll show you that once, uh, once this is fixed, assuming we can fix it. And uh, you can see exactly how that works. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice feature um, to have the bias control, but I do prefer the automatic one. Um, I'd rather just press a button and it sorts it out for the tape that's in there. A lot of them do, but this one doesn't have that automatic calibration. It just has the manual. 
So let's take the lid off and we'll have a look inside. So here we are inside the machine and this one looks fairly easy to work on. I can see that there's a couple of screws here on the transport. There's a couple underneath and I think this uh, whole transport will just come off in one go. Looks as though all the cables are socketed, which is good. You can uh, disconnect it fully to work on. Uh, this motor is attached to a back plate here, which is covering the caps and rollers. And uh, yeah, I can see that those belts on there have disintegrated. They've just turned to the usual syrupy goop on those wheels, so that will all need to be cleaned off. Um, these are interesting. I've not seen these before. There's four little circuit boards here, which are quite quite loose, to be honest. They are soldered in, but they're uh, flapping around a little bit. Um, these are Dolby circuits. So on the other side, there's a there's a chip with um, with a Dolby logo on, and there's four of them. And there's one here that you're just about to see, and there's uh, three more there. So I'm guessing that. There's one for Dolby B, one for Dolby C, one for Dolby S, one for HX Pro maybe, or maybe there's two per channel. Um, I, I don't know, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a little bit unusual. Looks fairly clean in here. There's no dust or anything, so yeah, I'm hoping it's just the belts on this and uh, it should restore this. So what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll get this transport out. Uh, like I said, it's only two screws, two screws here, two underneath, uh, and I'm expecting this to just uh, pull straight out. These front covers normally just clip off like that. You just lift them up and the front cover comes off, and you need to do that in order to get the transport back through this front panel, otherwise you, uh, you need to remove the whole front panel. So here's the mechanism out of the machine. This was really easy to get out. The um, All the cables were socketed, like I said, so it's just a question of unplugging those. Four screws, and the whole deck came out. So that is excellent. You can see there, on the capstan roller, the remains of that belt. Normally these don't just peel off easily. No, it's coming off in bits. So, probably going to need to scrape that off. So it's got most of it off, but as you can see, there's, uh, there's some left on there. So what I do is I just get some IPA and some tissue or a cotton bud, and I will work over that and just uh, clean that off. You can see in there that there is still some belt around the motor pulley as well, so we'll need to get at that. It looks as though to get to this belt, all we need is these screws releasing this frame here so the motor is attached to this plate. Three screws, there's one at the top there and uh, that should come off. We can get access to the heads here to clean those as well. But it does look, uh, it does look very clean, I can't see any dust in here at all.
that was a screw at the back. There's a long one at the back. Yeah, I need to scrape this off as well. There's our capstan. So I'll go ahead and clean this off and I will come back and we'll fit the belt. So you need a little bit of patience with that. It takes a little while to get that old belt off these rollers. Um, at least there's only two. An auto reverse deck, obviously there'd be two capstan rollers, so you'd have that belt spread over two rollers. So with that done, we can put the new belt on. I've just remembered that there is another belt. So this packet, if you remember, it's got two belts in there. Just looked down the side of the unit and I can see it just there. And it is still intact, but it's very sticky and uh, not doing anything. So I do need to get to that one as well. Um, looks as though I need to remove this board. This capstan lift out. Yeah, normally they just lift straight out the capstans. Okay, it looks as though this plate is ready to come off. Hopefully we don't get a lot of things springing out of this. Just disconnect this socket. that's holding it on I think Something's still holding it on somewhere. Yeah, 
Yeah, it feels like there's something on the other side stopping this. Let's uh, remove this back plate, see if that can reveal anything. See the LED panel on the back of there? That's to light up this window through the tape. Right, so. It's the central gear by the look of it. So it just come off. It's a little washer on the end here, I guess, that's holding it on. Yeah, that's it. That's just holding that cam gear on. <laughs> now this should come off. So I'll just put that over the gear for now. When we get this back on, we should be able to uh, get that on the correct location. Now, hopefully all of this is in the same position. See, some of this is spring-loaded. It's uh, You have to be careful. They don't get in the wrong positions. Yeah, that looks in the right place now. Okay, let's get this belt on. You're not going to be able to see what I'm doing here. I'm just hooking it around the motor spindle. There it 
is at last. Everything still seems to be sat in place. Just going to give this capstan a quick clean before I put it back. So it will actually sit on there without the screws on. Belt is in place. Okay, so we can refit this plate now, just giving it a clean. Okay, I think that's it at last. There was a few issues along the way, mostly because I didn't know what I was doing. The encounter was a victory, but I think that we've shown it as an example of what not to do. But I think it is back together okay now. We'll soon see when it's in and we switch it on. So let me get this fitted.
what appears to be working. It's a lot quieter as well. I was worried that the motor might have failed because these motors uh, are notorious for the bearings wearing down inside them and then they go noisy. Um, it's because it runs all the time. As soon as you turn the machine on, the capstan is running continuously. Um, and just that long period of time when the motor is active, that, uh, that just helps to wear the bearings out. But this one is, um, is quiet, so it's fine. Mechanism seems fine. Door opens and closes as it should. So I must have got those um, gears in the correct way in the end. So what I want to do with this deck now is I want to do a speed test on it to make sure that it's in spec. And I also want to run the calibration as well just to show you what that looks like. I'll just clip this back in. Okay. So the speed test, what I'm going to do is, I've got an oscilloscope here. If you had a frequency counter, you could use that. Um, I, you can get applications on mobiles now with frequency counters. So you could send the output to that and test it that way. I've got a test tape here, which has a three kilohertz sine wave recorded on it. So what I'm going to do is put that in the deck. Play that. Just turn that down a bit. So that's the three kilohertz being played. And what I'm going to do is send the output to my oscilloscope. It's just a cheap, uh, cheap oscilloscope, this one, but it does the job. Okay, so I don't know whether you can see that on the display, but at the bottom it's got 3.09 kilohertz. That is quite close, but I am going to just adjust that slightly, see if we can get it any better. So the way I'm going to adjust this is from the motor. There is a small hole just at the back here, and you just need a flat bladed small screwdriver. Put that into the hole and you can as you turn that, you can hear that tone changing. So I'm just going to turn that pot on the back of the motor. I don't know if you can read the display there on the oscilloscope, but it's... That's showing 3 kilohertz there now. So we know that that motor is running at the right speed. So what I want to do now is run the calibration. And I can show you what that looks like. I've got a Type 4 cassette here, it's a TDK MA90, so it's a decent tape. So as I said before, when you put a tape in and it recognises, it says there, Type 4, it sets the deck up for a standard characteristic for a Type 4 tape. And when the record level and bias level dials here are in the centre position, this is set to the default setting. Now it then gives you a, a certain amount of adjustment on the record level and the bias, which then alters the preset characteristics. So like I said, if this is on the center position, put a tape in, you can just record straight away, but if you want the absolute best out of the tape, then you need to adjust these and we'll be able to see what's on the level, whether it's near or far from what we expect. So the way to run the calibration, put the tape in, press the calibration button 
and you'll notice the display changes. So instead of the VU meter, we now have H and L, that's for high and low. So what it's going to do, it's going to record a high tone, which is 10 kilohertz, and at the same time a low tone, 400 hertz, records that on the tape, listens to the playback, and then shows on the display what the level is that's coming out. So press record, and it's on record pause, so we can press pause or play. And this is the output that's showing here. So it's showing that the little indicators here, the two arrows, that's the level it should be at. And that's the same for high and low. That's what we're hoping for, that they both match um, this level here. So we can see that they're both lower than they should be, but also that the high output is more than the low output. So we need to level that off. So first of all, we'll adjust the bias, and this will reduce the high and increase the low if we turn it one way, and it'll do the opposite if we turn it the other way. So I'm going to turn it to the left, so you can see that's the wrong way. That's increasing the high and taking down the low, so we'll turn it back. We should be able to get them pretty much level. There we are. There is the odd fluctuation on the tape, and this is because it's not a new tape. It's a, it's a well-used tape, in fact. So um, as the tape moves along and it gets to imperfections in the tape, you will see little dropouts on this. But that's pretty level to me. Now what we need to do is increase the record level up to the desired level. And that's those little indicator marks. Perhaps a bit more bias just to get that level. Obviously hit a bit of bad tape then because it went down, you saw it. But generally, I think that's about right. So we've now set this up. This is going to make the best recording for that particular tape that's in there now. If we were going to change that tape to a different one, we'd need to reset these back because it's probably wrong for the next tape. But that looks pretty good. And it means that the heads are good on this deck. The heads are good, the circuit's good. It's giving the correct output. If, uh, if we were to adjust this record level and we couldn't get that level on here, then we'd know that there was some problem with the deck. Okay, well let's go ahead and make a recording and we can switch the monitor between source and tape and we'll be able to hear if there's any difference between those two recordings with a metal tape. Um, and if we switch the Dolby over to Dolby S, then this is the very best recording that we can get and I don't expect there to be much difference in the sound at all, if any. So let me uh, set that up now. So I've connected the input to my mini disc player, which is playing a track at the moment. So if we put it on to record, we can hear that audio coming out through the speakers. Let me just turn it up slightly. And the level on here, we can see is just on zero dBs. We could just increase that a touch. So let's go ahead and record. We've got Dolby S on. We have the calibration set. We have the record level set to a decent level here. So this should be making the recording right now. And we're listening to the source, okay? So you see that light there, it says source. And this is the monitor button to switch between source and tape. So when I press this and it goes to tape, we're actually gonna hear what the recorded sound is from this tape. So it's recording and playing back at the same time. So here we go. <laughs> that sounded exactly the same to me. Let me just uh, turn that up a little bit and I'll do it again.
source type source really good sound so that's the playback from the tape yeah I mean um, I'd expect that to be honest with this level of deck and the tape that I'm using I would expect it to sound uh, good but I don't think I've actually heard one sound exactly the same before um, when switching the monitors so that is uh, it's really impressive so uh, this deck is is done. Um, I don't think there's much more to show you on this. So I hope you found this video useful. There's been a few bits we've gone through in here. Um, we've done the servicing on this deck, of course, and then we've just discussed the BIOS as well. So yeah, I hope you've got something out of it. And I will see you on the next one.